Hello everyone, let's do something ludicrous, kind of like Spaceballs with the ludicrous speed and being jammed and all that, with Michael Winslow and all that, pretty fun, fun stuff. If you ever watch Red and Link, they did kind of like a sound effect thing where they're trying to basically do videos and make sound effects with their mouse to the videos. I would have loved to see Michael Winslow from Police Academy and that, because even back in the 80s, 90s, he actually showed up on game shows frequently, like Password, etc., doing this awesome, awesome sound effects. But in any case, uh, we're actually going to load one of three games here, and in no particular order here, I want to do Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, which is a game that run previously at roughly 8 to 11 frames per second. And wait till you see, this is going to be bomb right now. Let's check it out for yourself. I'm going to run it. As soon as I get the game loading, I'm going to go to uh, Retro Settings, Input. And again, you're going to be absolutely heavy and you're mind blown because uh, just like Rogue Squadron working. And by the way, uh, Rogue Squadron is pretty damn cool because... Uh, the same director who did Wonder Woman movies and Wonder Woman 1984 is directing an upcoming effort for the Rogue Squadron movie. And a teaser trailer is pretty damn awesome. So I'm going to go do hockey bands here. I'm going to actually uh, go to load state. Yes, I have safe states to work with this as well. And it might even work on a Mega Drive S and NES and NES Classics from the main user interface. I mean, uh, cross your fingers. It might happen. But I'm going to make this uh, be... L2 for right now. I don't want to erase my save state, but yes, you can program these and put start to revert them, but I'm going to have L2 here. Just check it out for yourself. Top left. Resume. L2. Look at this awesomeness here. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. We're running 60 plus frames per second here. This is so damn awesome. And this is the inspiration for Rogue Squadron in the game. I mean, they absolutely love the uh, vehicular sections, and they had a whole game made out of it with Rogue Squadron. And of course, they had a battle for Naboo as well. And the enemies there have a little bit of a jar and slowdown, just like Mario Tennis with the skip the cinema, skip the replays like I showed you before. But this is pretty damn awesome. 60, 70 plus frames per second. Let's take out another uh, little enemy here. Then we'll move on to the other two games. Oh, yeah. Defeat the enemies before you get the instant replays, uh, skip the replays, etc. But yes, Red Link is one of the things I typically watch on YouTube on a daily basis, and I watch Mega Drive in school, a few other videos like that, obviously, AVGN, Angry Video Game Nerd, etc. I'm going to be doing more videos on this, but this is damn awesome. I'm going to be doing on-foot section videos as well, but yes, this is so cool. And we're going to go into one of the other games right now. We'll do San Francisco Rush 2049. Run here, and uh, you get to see this uh, blazing glory as well. I mean, if I even attempted to load these on the normal clooping court, it's not even the same thing whatsoever. Here we go. Okay, let's see this blazing speed here. We'll go to another tough game after this. But one of my favorite games on Dreamcast, as well as in the arcade and on Nintendo 64. It's a damn awesome game. If there are any other games you want to see, like Run and Better, let me know. But I've been testing these. And uh, on the normal Gloopin' Core as well as this, and there's just an extreme difference. It's going to be an awesome, awesome release, folks. Just coming out within a few weeks now. And uh, let me know what you're watching on your streaming service, such as Netflix, uh, Hulu, etc. I mean, I saw there's a trailer for Season 3 of Cobra Kai, and I need to watch it still. But like I said, I'd highly recommend watching a teaser trailer for, of course, the upcoming Rose Squadron movie, which is probably going to be tentatively coming out in 2023 on Disney+, Plus, etc. And I'm also a little bit disappointed that theatrical uh, feature is probably going to be uh, pretty sketchy at best, because pretty much all 17 movies I heard for Warner Brothers are all going straight to streaming next year. This is going to be pretty rough. And uh, Christopher Nolan actually uh, made a hoopla about that, because... Uh, certain movies just demand to be seen in a the theater. I'm kind of hoping it just it's not the end of the theater experience here. I really, really love going to theaters. I used to go pretty much every week to see pretty much every new movie. And as it comes now, I have to watch them on demand and such, which is just, it kind of sucks. I used to love going to theaters, and I saw Inception, Interstellar, and these were both amazing movies for Christopher Nolan in the theater. And of course, I saw all three of the Batman movies, you know, Batman Begins, all that, etc., etc. He was a great director for all those three. Uh, but let me know what uh, your favorite movie you've ever seen in the theater was. I mean, I'm trying to think, like, even going back to the 2000s, I absolutely loved seeing Starship Troopers in that theater. That was just a great, great uh, movie to see in the theater. But we're going to do Destruction Derby uh, next, because that is another tough game. Uh, again, we stayed at 60 frames per second plus there, so this is pretty damn awesome. Ludicrous speed for the win. Destruction Derby is probably one of the toughest games around. Let's check this out right now. If I have a couple more minutes, I might load one of these on the standard glooping cord just to show you the difference there. But again, we have Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, uh, of course, the amazing 
San Francisco Rush 2049, and now, not last but not least, Destruction Derby. And I have to say, my favorite Destruction Derby game is clearly Destruction Derby 2 on PlayStation 1. I love the second stage where you can do the course group barrel loop, kind of like doing a Top Gun in the car. But uh, it's going to pretty much uh, refresh at the top off there. Just watch how the game catches up. And this is going to be absolutely insane there. This is so damn cool. Okay? And it's starting out uh, pretty okay, but it's going to get way, way better in a moment here. Just keep your eyes peeled out here. It's going to get absolutely insane. And we're going to be going to ludicrous speed, uh, warp speed, doing ahead. And I'm also watching, of course, the Mandalorian show, which is getting pretty damn awesome. I'm loving all the references here. And I want to get a little bit more Star Wars in as well. So I decided to watch, actually, the Clone Wars series. The only episode I ever saw of Clone Wars many, many years back was the Yoon episode. Oh, jeez. But uh, I started watching more episodes, and they have uh, a, some pretty cool recurring characters that uh, they don't really do the storyline to in the movies, but it's cool that they actually do them in the cartoon series. So even like uh, when I saw the final uh, final Star Wars movie, episode 3, they had a little bit of uh, preliminary text on the screen which showed uh, General Grievous and what happened with him, and it actually was from the Clone Wars miniseries, and it's pretty damn cool that they actually are both canon. Not like with Castlevania where you have canon and you have non-canon, I mean, name some game series or even movies that are considered canon and non-canon, like, talk about Highlander. We have Highlander 1 with Christopher Lambert, Sean Connery, oh jeez, which are both great movies, but uh, uh, the Sean Connery one, I mean, even though he's a great actor and everything, Highlander to quicken it is not canon anymore. I mean, three and on are pretty much considered canon. Two is considered like blasphemy to the series, but I still enjoyed how weird it was. Kind of like even when they did uh, certain movies like Phantasm and they had the the latest one that came out. Nobody wants to consider it canon, even though it had the original Tallman actor, Aiden, Angus uh, Scrum, before he actually passed away. Uh, people, even the hardest, die hardest of fans, didn't like that movie. But even some movies like Child's Play which I had uh, Brad Dorf, which is really, really cool, but the remake, uh, which came out recently in theaters, uh, did not have Brad Dorf because there's rights that are pretty much dependent on whether or not uh, streaming service are on TV and, of course, uh, in theaters. Brad Dorf was not part of that. <laughs> this sucks. I screwed up so bad. We got to do another demonstration there. Uh, let's try this one more time. Okay. <laughs> Why do I have oncoming traffic here? This is ridiculous. No other destruction derby has oncoming traffic. I'm going the right way, but the oncoming traffic here. This is ridiculous. Okay. If we're doing like the uh, demolition derby ring, that's different. But they're actually oncoming right now. But this is pretty damn awesome. We're going to try the same game on the standard loop and core to see how it runs as a comparison error. Again, we're 83 to 98 frames per second right now. And we're going to go load this with the standard looping core and see what happens. Low content start to tree dummy, uh, Nintendo 64 folder, and we're going to load that same exact game with the standard looping core. Maybe we'll load all three of these in a row to see, but Destruction Derby first with the standard looping core. And yes, the Child's Play remake was kind of cool. They did more of an AI style thing, but uh, Brad Dorf is supposed to be in an upcoming series, which might be on Shutter, Netflix, whoever picks it up, I believe. But we're going to do standard looping right now and see how this runs as a comparison here. Load the remap file. Again, thank you, Black Sunshine, and of course, Matt Franco 8 for helping out with these mappers because these are all going to be incredibly awesome for the release. And I still need to get to uh, watching, of course, a uh, uh, certain show, the Ray Donovan show, which is... Uh, I've watched like a couple episodes of it and it really, really appeals to me as being like another binge worthy show. Uh, load remap file, uh, go to perm sheets, and we're going to go to the destruction derby here. Again, we're running this on the standard looping core right now. Did a little, a little bit of comparison. And by the way, these are all going to run fine on the Mega Drive SNES SNES Classic as well. It's going to be an all round release. It doesn't even matter what resolution you have in it, it's still going to run pretty damn awesome. But uh, we're actually going to go into uh, on screen display here and turn on the. Uh, frame per second here, just to give a little bit of a comparison between this and Extreme right now. Again, uh, it has untapped potential. I'm still trying to work on tweaking it even some more. Okay, the sales runs. I mean, it's starting out pretty nice, but it never matters until you get end game. That's when it really, really truly matters. Okay, and I don't think this is going to run all too well. Again, we are getting like 80 to 90 frames per second here and there. And it's already so it's like... Underwater seas game sprint right now, and uh, this is gonna be abysmal. Oh no, it's running so slow. I don't think it's gonna get any better here. I think it's gonna stay uh, pretty bad. Oh, this is almost unbearable. Oh, slow motion 
mode. Anyway, there's the tr it's, we're, we're like 18 frames per second. This is ridiculous. This is not going to cut it. We need to go back to the extreme core. So yes, this is unbearably un unplayable whatsoever. This is terrible. Okay, let's go to the other game here. Low content, Star Trek, you're dummy. Uh, Nintendo 64. Oh, by the way, yeah, let's do a uh, Star Trek, you're dummy. Nintendo 64. We'll do the San Francisco Rush right now. So I'm going to do all comparisons here. And let me know what other games you want to see sped up, because I'm trying to do what I can with these. And there are a few games that don't currently work, which are due to refresh rates and such, but I'm going to try to get uh, fixed up either for this release or the next release. But uh, hopefully they'll all work out. But we're doing this for the same group and core. We'll load the remap file. And again, Ray Donovan's next on my list to watch. And uh, I'm kind of curious what other shows you guys and yellows are going to recommend. I mean, obviously I'm watching... Uh, the Mandalorian, and I just saw the latest trailers for Loki and the Winter Soldier, which are pretty damn awesome as well. I mean, mind-blowing. They're like theatrical uh, equivalent experiences, and it's going to be pretty damn cool. So, a little remap file, Perm Chiefs maps again, and we're going to go San Francisco Rush the other way here. But two games that currently don't work are Yoshi's Story and, of course, uh, Pokemon Puzzle League. But I'm going to see what I can do to get these fixed up before the release or on the next release. But, again, San Francisco Rush 2049. And let's see how this pales in comparison uh, to, of course, the Extreme Core. So we're going to start this out here and get in-game here. And, again, I love the Dreamcast version quite a bit. Okay, let's hope for some at least uh, some potential here. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 20 frames per second. This is abysmal. And it has a lot of stutter. See, watch what happens when I start doing the ramps and stuff. It's going to be like slow motion mode activate. Like, trying to play hard driving, race driving, which are very, very extensively uh, CPU intensive hardware games that, which do not run well in MAME. So right here, it should start slowing down as I jump over this. Look at this. Oh, whoa, whoa, that was a slowdown. <laughs> that doesn't happen on the extreme core, folks. Let's try to do this jump here. We're 60 frames per second. Yeah, these are both abysmal here. So we're getting four times the speed. Oh, slow motion mode activate. Oh, that's so bad. 